Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. It will always be free and uh, you'll get notified whenever a new video goes up. I put up at least one video a day on the uh, current weather and the long range. We're in a storm situation, so I'm going to be trying to do um, at least two, maybe a little bit more uh, with regards to this nor'easter. And well, as soon as the video goes up, you'll get a notification and you can go right ahead and take a look at it. And if you subscribe, it really helps me out with Google. So I would definitely appreciate it. So let's look at the long range. By the way, with the nor'easter, I cut a separate video earlier. You can and take, go ahead and take a look at that after this one's done. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at the long range. And I want to start, um, I'm going to start with Monday, this coming Monday. So I moved it ahead a little bit. And I just want to show you <clears throat> what's going on with the pattern because we have this blocking ridge up to the north in Canada. And that has steered the jet stream well to the south. And you can see these intense systems that are in that southern part of the jet stream that are moving right along. And this is our nor'easter as reflected in the upper levels of the atmosphere. We don't have a, a good flow of cold, cold air in Canada at all. So the Arctic is, is basically cut off. So the air here is what we call um, a, a dirty cold air or a dirty high. Uh, that is, <coughs> the air is at best seasonally cold. Maybe it's a little bit colder than normal, but it isn't true Arctic air or polar air. So that's why the snow with a system like this is relatively limited. Now, here's that upper air system as it lifts up and out. But what happens over the next week is this block in Canada finally begins to break down. So you start to get the flow normalized uh, to some degree where the jet stream suddenly uh, realigns itself by the end of next week or next Sunday. You have a flow of air coming out of Canada. Now, one of the things that I want to point out is that a couple of things that have caught my eye that we do have, you know, when you have a pattern like this, you can get um, you get weather disturbances that develop in the flow in the northern stream. And there's one such a disturbance that comes down next weekend. But because the jet is so broad, uh, you really don't have room for a lot of development. However, one of the things that I'm watching is that there, there is a disturbance in this flow that's behind the one for next weekend that comes in early next week. And you can you can see it right right here. This is for Monday, January 30th. So my, my, uh, what I'm going to be looking at is, as it is in this position, it'll probably mean some kind of below forming offshore and, and moving out. But if this disturbance is a little deeper and a little bit further to the left, it could mean for a bit of a surprise for some areas here. Um, one of the things that might prevent that is that there is another weak system indicated right behind it. So that might limit the amount of room. In terms of the broad pattern, you have this flow out of Canada, out of northern Canada, set up. Now, there are some initial problems with this uh, overall in, this, in terms of the cold air itself. Because when we look at uh, the temperatures with respect to averages, okay, being normal or above normal. When we look at Canada, all through this week coming up, temperatures there are running much above normal. So we have to kind of replace that air with colder than normal air from northern Canada before we truly can get cold here. So what happens over time is that gradually that above normal air starts to get replaced and you do wind up with below normal temperatures eventually. It doesn't happen right away, but as soon as we get to around December, January 31st, February 1st, you start to see temperatures turning below normal in the east. And then they kind of repair themselves some more in Canada. So you don't have that big, huge, amorphous, a, a much above normal temperatures up there. So um, it's just going to take a little bit of time. The upper air pattern will set up cold, and then it's going to take probably several days before the air starts to go below average here in the northeast let me go back to the um, upper air again because i want to show you um, what happens over time so let me just back this up to just about the beginning and then i'm going to switch to uh, the upper airflow again and you can see it here 
So there's our block, and it goes away, and now you get this flow out of Canada. Now, what we're what the model seems to be doing in the long term, as we go out 10 days, 12 days, and 16 days, is that it is setting up to be rather cold for a longer term basis. Um, at least out at day 16, we do not have any signs to me that show that um, the pattern is going to be a short one. This might last a little bit. Maybe it'll last more than um, a week or so. Maybe it'll last two weeks. I think a lot's going to depend on this ridge in the west and whether it's intact. Now, granted, every run's going to start having, will, will, will look a little differently, but it, barring the fact that the uh, GFS has had a few hiccups along the way, it's been trying to be consistent with this. And this is a pretty cold flow here that sets up. It comes from all the way up uh, from uh, the northern regions all the way down into the east. So this is a very favorable pattern. And another thing that I kind of like about this is that the flow in the west is split. So you've got this jet here in the north, but you also have a fairly strong Pacific jet. It's not overly strong, but there's it's strong enough that you do have weather systems moving along it. So we're going to have to see, assuming this pans out, we're going to have to see whether this is going to uh, mean for anything in terms of storminess in the long term. Now, I would suggest, uh, and I've said this many times, the upper air uh, forecast on the GFS to me is far more important than what it ever does on the surface because uh, there's just too many variations that cause the surface to, the surface look to change. So you can't really look at this as gospel uh, in, in terms of storms. Okay, so I'll back this up. So here's our nor'easter. Now we have one front that comes through later next week and it tries to develop a wave on it this is for the end of next week january 27th but because as i showed you that 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 uh, flow is kind of broad it goes out and then it's going to try and do something here now this is for monday the 30th and the 31st and you, you can see that it, it, it's trying to form a, a low just offshore and actually has high pressure building into eastern Canada so it, 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 the surface is actually not bad if we could get this the trough itself is like this if it, it, it's too it's too broad and it's too uh, positively tilted in other words it's tilted north west south east where weather systems are, are going to want to just move along and that's because there's this second disturbance behind it that's preventing it from being deeper but I've seen it happen many times that maybe this system winds up not being as deep. And as a result, if you could get the trough to be, let me just, there we go. If you can get the trough to be more like this, a little bit more V-shaped and a little bit more neutrally tilted, in other words, tilted more north-south, and maybe you can get a storm to form closer to the coast. I think this is going to be something that bears watching. Uh, around the very end of January. And then beyond that, you know, once that goes out, you do have that next system kind of dives in and weakens. Because there's only so much room in the atmosphere, but what you do have, at least based on this GFS run, is that you do have um, weather front, Arctic front, uh, uh, Arctic front after Arctic front, uh, if we want to call them that, uh, coming down. So either that or we can call them polar fronts. But the bottom line is that um, it does have a much colder look throughout all of the eastern half of the United States right through the first part of um, February. So we're going to see how this holds up uh, as we look at future runs, of course, because everything is always subject to some sort of change. Uh, but, you know, if, if, as far as the long range um, winter weather lovers, you should be uh, encouraged by this look. The storminess part of the equation may take will take care of itself and I, I would focus less on that because I think if you've watched enough of these videos in the long range long enough you've seen the fact that as you go deep out in the long range when it shows storms they almost never happen okay and they certainly don't happen and if they do happen they don't happen the way the model indicates when you're looking at it not 10 days out 12 days out 15 days out so I would take this in a broad sense you try to look at this in a broad view and um, see the fact that the model continues to show this trend to colder uh, colder pattern going into February. And by the way, 
you know, I know a lot of you, you know, a lot of people like to make these sort of unequivocal statements regarding what they think the weather is like. Please use some meteorology to support that. Um, don't come at, I mean, if you come at me with climatology, that's fine and dandy, but you know what? That doesn't, that's not dealing with the reality of what's going on with the models. So um, you need to tell me that you don't, uh, you think that the model is wrong in showing um, the flow out of Canada, that it's going to be more westerly instead, and, and, and give me some reasoning other than the fact that you feel that this is the case. Because, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 40 years, and, uh, you know, a lot of times what you feel and, and, and what happens and what you think are all three different things. So I'm just trying to bear that in mind. I'm not necessarily trying to criticize anybody for, you know, putting up, you know, that sort of um, information. I welcome that, and I welcome that conversation. But, um, you know, I, I would like to see you try to be a little less emotional about it and a little more um, open-minded in terms of, 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 of what you see. So end of little minor rant here. It's kind of early and it's kind of late at night and I just got home from a long day's work. So everybody have a great uh, day. Uh, subscribe to my um, forecasts on uh, my weather app if you'd like. There, uh, the download is free. Uh, the uh, ad, the subscription is just a buck a month for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. Specific forecasts, no icons. You get me, satellites, radars, and more. And, um, you know, if you'd like, go right ahead. And again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's free. You get notified every time a video goes up. And um, this way, you, you don't miss all these exciting weather changes that take place. Okay, have a great weekend, and we'll keep you abreast on the latest with regards to the Nor'easter as well.